Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge, break to new mutiny, mm. where mm. civil blood makes civil hands the, unclean. I, I in a cabal? Rosie, quiet. From forth, the fatal loins of these two foes. A pair no. of star-crossed lovers take their life. <coughs> whose misadventure, piteous overthrows, do with their death bury their parents' strife. Mm -hmm. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's and end not could press remove, the red button. is okay. now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears and attend, press the red button. one here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Scene, Verona, a public place. Enter Samson and Gregory, servants of the House of Capulet, armed with swords and bucklers. Gregory, on my word, will not carry coals. No, for then we should be colliers. I mean, and we be in a collar, we'll draw. Aye, as you live, draw your neck out of the collar. I strike quickly, being moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir, to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runnest away. A dog of that house will move me to stand. I shall take the wall of any man or maid of Montague's. That shows thee a weak slave, for the weakest goes to the wall. True. Therefore women, being the weaker vessels, are ever thrust to the wall. Therefore I will push Montague's men from the wall and thrust his maids to the wall. The quarrel is between our masters and us, their men. Tis all one. I will show myself a tyrant. When I have fought with the men, I will be cruel with the maids and cut off their heads. The heads of the maids? Ay, the heads of the maids, or their maiden heads. Take it in what sense thou wilt. <clears throat> that must take it in the sense that feel it. <laughs> Me they shall feel while I am able to stand, and tis known I am a pretty piece of flesh. <laughs> tis thou art not fish, if thou art, if thou art hast, thou art been a poor John. Dry thy tool, here comes the house of Montague. My naked weapon is out, quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn thy back and run? Fear me not. M no, Mary, I fear thee. Let us take the law of our sides. Let them begin. I will frown and let them take it as they list. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law of our side if I say I? No. No, sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Say better. Here comes my master's kinsman. Better, sir. Draw if you be men! Gregory, remember thy swashing blow! Ah! Ah! Horse, fools! Put up your swords! You know not what you do! What? Art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio, and look upon thy death! I do but keep the peace! Put up thy sword, or manage it to part these men with me! What? Drawn on top of peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell, all Montagues, and thee! Coward! Ah! Clubs, bills, and partisans! Strike! Beat them down! Down with the Capulets! Down with the Montagues! Ah! Yes. What noise is this? Give me my longsword! Ho! A crutch! A crutch! Why call you for the sword? My sword, I say! Old Montague has come and flourishes his blade in spite of me! Thou villain Capulet, hold me not! Let me go! Thou shalt not! A foot to seek a foe! Ah! Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbored stained and steel. Will they not hear? What ho, you men, you beasts, that quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins? 
On pain of torture from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet, and thee, Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets and made Verona's ancient citizens cast by their great beseeming ornaments to wield old partisans in hands as old, cankered with peace, to part your cankered hate. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me, and Montague come you this afternoon to know our further judgment in this case, to old Freetown, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Who set this ancient quarrel new approach? Speak, nephew. Were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary, and yours. Close fighting ere I did approach. I, I drew to part them. In the instant came the fiery Tybalt with his sword prepared, which as he breathed defiance to my ears, he swung about his head and cut the winds. <laughs> Nothing hurt withal hissed him in scorn. Whilst we were interchanging thrusts and blows, came more and more and fought on part and part till the prince came, who parted either part. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Right glad I am he was not at this fray. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drave me to walk abroad, where, underneath the grove of sycamore, that westward rooteth from the city side, so early waking did I see your son. Towards him I made, but he was ware of me, and stole into the covert of the wood. I measuring his affections by my own, that most are busied when they're most alone, pursued my humor not pursuing his, and gladly shunned who gladly fled from me. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew, adding to clouds, more clouds with his deep sighs. But all so soon as the all-cheering sun should in the furthest east begin to draw the shady curtains from Aurora's bed, away from the light seals home my heavy sun, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks far daylight out, and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humor prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends, but he, his own affections, counselor, is to himself. I will not say how true, but to himself, so secret and so close, so far from sounding and discovery. As is the bud bit with an envious worm, ere he can spread his sweet leaves to the air, or dedicate his beauty to the sun. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, would as willingly give cure as no. See where he comes, so please you step aside. I'll know his grievance, or be much denied. I would thou wert so happy by thy stay, to hear true shrift. Come, madame, it's away. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But new struck nine. Ay, me, sad hours are long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favor where I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Alas, that love, whose view is muffled still, should without eyes see pathways to his will. Where shall we dine? Oh, me. What fray happened here? Yet, tell me not, for I have heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. <sighs> Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first creates, O oh, heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, still waking sleep, that is not what this is. This love feel I, that feel no love in this, dost thou not laugh? No, cause I'd rather weep. Good heart at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why, such is love's transgression. 
griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Love is a smoke made with the fume of sighs being purged, a fire sparkling in lovers' eyes being vexed, a sea nourished with loving tears. What is it else? A madness most discreet, a choking gall and a preserving sweet. Farewell, my cuz. Soft, I will go along, and if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut, I have lost myself, I am not here. This is not Romeo, he's some other where. Tell me, in sadness, who is that you love? What, shall I groan and tell thee? Groan? Why, no, but sadly, tell me who. Bid a sick man in sadness make his will. A word ill urged to one that is so ill. In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. A right good mark. Man, and she's fair I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, as soon as hit. Well, in that hit you'll miss. She'll not be hit. With Cupid's arrow she hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity, well armed, from love's weak childish bow she lives unharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor bide the encounter of assailing eyes, nor ope her lap to saint seducing gold. Oh, she is rich in beauty, only poor, that when she dies, with beauty dies her store. And she has sworn that she will live chaste? She hath, and in that sparing makes huge waste. For beauty starved with her severity, cuts beauty off from all posterity. She is too fair, too wise, wisely too fair, to merit bliss by making me despair. She has forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine other beauties. Tis the way to call hers exquisite in question more. These happy masks that kiss fair ladies' brows, being black, put us in mind they hide the fair. He that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasures of his eyesight lost. Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve but a note where I may read who passed that passing fair? Farewell, thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine. Die in debt. Good girl.